So let's talk about Neo. Who is Neo, first of all? Because uh, what I found from the story is that a lot of people, primarily younger Gen Z, have very little knowledge of who Neo is. Very little knowledge. So many people were were, were talking about this controversy, which I'm going to dive into here, but have no clue. Like, who who is this? He's a, a artist or some stuff. So just to quickly recap, Neo was arguably one of the greatest uh, contemporary songwriters in R and B. Um, he's written Beyonce records and Rihanna. He's written records for all of the biggest R and B singers, uh, male and female. And then he had he had a successful career himself um, to a certain extent. And uh, yeah, man, like he he's just he's he's that dude. He's just a great songwriter and all of that. And he had his run in, I don't know, the 2000s, mid-2000s, whatever years it was. He had his run or whatever. But since then, he's been pretty low-key. And, you know, the great thing about when you're an artist as a songwriter is that while you're not in in the in the limelight, right, you're not in front of the mic uh, doing all these shows, he's probably still getting a bag writing behind the scenes for, for some of these big artists still to this very day or producing stuff. And that's... Honestly, where the real money's at in music is, you know, writers and, and behind the scenes in a lot of aspects. So that being said, Neil pops out in an interview where he talks about parenting and his whole idea and concept when it comes to, well, let's just d- dive into this. So Neil says parents have forgotten what the role of a parent is. And uh, I'm going to read you the quote right here. And we're going to go into the actual interview video and, and really kind of get the full context of it. Cause I think that's important here. So he, the quote here says, I just personally come from an era where a man was a man and a woman was a woman that already was a rub, was already rubbing people the wrong way. And by people, I think, you know who I'm talking about. Um, and there were, and there was two genders and that's how I rocked. You can identify as a goldfish. If you like that ain't my business. It becomes my business when you try to make me play the game. I'm not going to call you a goldfish. I feel like parents have almost forgotten what the role of a parent is. If your little boy comes to you and says, daddy, I want to be a girl. And you just let him rock with that. So let's take a look here at the interview. This came from Vlad TV. It's about five minutes, not very long. And we're going to get a better context for the question and, and his whole response to it. I have no issue with with the LBG. I have no problem with none of it, with nobody. Okay? Right. Love who you love, do what you do. Exactly. I just personally come from an era where a man was a man and a woman was a woman, and it wasn't but two genders, and that's just how I rock. Me now, too. Now it's, it's, it's you could you could identify as a goldfish if you feel. Like. Right. <laughs> I, don't I agree. Care. That ain't my business. It's just, it becomes my business when you try to make me play the game with you. I'm not gonna right. call you a goldfish, but exactly. you, you want to be a goldfish, you go be a goldfish. It's all Amen. Good. I mean, well said. It's, it's just we live in a weird time, man. We, we do. do. We, we do. live in a time where a person will have a mental breakdown in front of their camera. Right. Wait, let me let me white balance. <laughs> Yo, he he ain't lying. There is something to say about how people approach stuff. You know, stuff that should be personal, and they want to broadcast everything. Uh, for 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 validation, attention, clout, whatever whatever it is, some of the stuff even for me don't make no sense. Like, why would you do a? Why would you have a breakdown on camera and and you know share all that shit with the world? It it is very odd to me. Right? What the hell is that? Like, if you if you are of sound mind enough to find the light, right? <laughs> And exactly. Then break exactly. Down. Exactly. Ain't nothing wrong with you. Right. Catch, man. No, there is something wrong Whatever. with you. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> right. There ain't nothing wrong with you. Like, man. Right, just, right. You're know. you're adding to it. It's all how we deal with life. Yeah, you know? Yeah. And they a lot of people want pity, self-pity. I uh and I listen, don't like that. That was one thing that was not allowed in the house that mm. I grew up in. It's like, okay, uh, get your cry out, you know, right. give that its moment. But once it's done. Keep moving. That's right. We're not going to sit and dwell in sorrow. We're not going to no. sit and dwell in anger. We're going to give those emotions the moment that they deserve. The, then we're going to respect those emotions. But then we're going to get up and continue moving. Yo, that, that right there is very important because that is very much uh, a, a, a masculine uh, uh, trait or a thing that I believe is, is passed down along men. Um, it's what I learned, right? You go through something. 
you deal with it in the moment and then you move the fuck on and move forward because you can't you can't afford to get hung up on something and let it weigh you down um he kind of really i think he articulated that pretty well and, and that is very much something that I, I believe is how uh men should handle things it's not to say that you don't address it you address it but once it's been addressed you got to move forward it's not about the fall you can fall a million times mm -hmm. you get up a million and one that's that's the way i was raised me yeah. too yeah. me too like, all right that hurt go ahead cry now me. they pamper they oh my god and trigger warnings what the right. hell is a trigger warning <laughs> yes exactly I, I, it's just when I it just is weird the world became they definitely cook in the the new wave uh, whatever you want to call it uh the 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 new generation that is essentially doing this they definitely cooking right now so sensitive like like comedians can't tell jokes no more no. Like, everybody's offended it's a joke it's right. a comedian. <laughs> right. It's a joke. You're not supposed to take it serious. It's a joke. Right. His literal job is to joke. About want, everyone. About everyone right. and everything. <laughs> and people want to get offended and like, don't say that. That's that's triggering. Oh my God. You know what? Yeah. Sit in your house by yourself. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it, annoys me. it annoys me. I mean, anything can trigger you. A light can trigger you. A smell can trigger you. So, I mean, we got to walk on eggshells. Well, that's Listen, what they want us to. That's what they want us to do. But My generation, there were no trigger warnings. Okay. Yeah. You, you, you got up and you kept moving. That's right. that's kind of what it has to we be. We was kicked outside. We would come inside before the lights mm -hmm. go down. Exactly if that. We got bu bumps and bruises. We just washed it off with the hose outside. Yeah, <laughs> you was good. Come on, man. It was, like, it's totally different times. We need to get back to them days. I feel like, I feel like the the... I feel like parents have almost almost forgotten what the role of a parent is. Amen. It's like, okay, Lost control. if your little boy comes to you and says, Daddy, I want to be a girl, and you just let him rock with that, you just let him. Right. He's five. Right. And where did he get that if from? If you let this five-year-old boy decide to eat candy all day, he's going to do that. Exactly. Like, when, when did it become a good idea to let a five-year-old, let a six-year-old, let a 12-year-old make a life-changing decision for themselves? Right. When did that happen? Right. Yo, like for real, we got to be honest. Th this right here is so true. And even for me, uh, I I I'm very much in agreement here w with this concept. I and it really bothers me when I see these reports of some of these states, especially California, I saw something where um, they're rolling out a law or looking to, or maybe it already rolled out, where if your child comes to the parent and says that they are they, they want gender affirming care or so on and so forth at a, you know a young age and if you deny it that they can essentially take your child away they can consider it some kind of an abuse or neglect or something like it's the wildest thing simply put how is it that in order to operate a vehicle you have to be a certain age in order to vote you have to be a certain age in order to drink liquor you have to be a certain age um in order to have sexual relations you should be of a certain age right both both parties right there's there's, there's even that to regulate when uh, ages when between two people and how minimally they should be uh for that to be legal um there's even an age for when you can join the military to give your life essentially right in defense of our country there's so many other so many other areas that have minimum age requirements that are by and large much older into like a teenage or what we defined as a legal adult at 18. how is it that when it comes to this aspect it's okay that they can be five four six seven and and it's like, yeah, they know what the hell they're talking about. That's the thing that doesn't make, it's the dumbest concept. And I don't even know how we got to this point because to believe that a five, six, seven year old knows what they want to do with their gender and then move on it. But then in order for a 12 year old wants to drink a beer or get drunk, no, you can't, you gotta be 21 to do that. You, you see how it starts to be so stupid and it doesn't make sense. Like, I don't, I don't understand that. I, I, I don't get that. Don't and get to that. medicate these young kids that are five, six, growing up and knowing that 
it, it affects their brain. It affects their organs. It mm-hmm. makes them sick. But they're not allowed to do drugs. They're not allowed to do alcohol. Right. We, we can medicate he them. He can't up. drive a car yet, but he can decide his sex. Right. Oh, right. What sex orientation? And he can cut off his pee pee. And and that to me that makes no sense whatsoever. And I, so I, I don't know if this is true, but I heard a rumor that they 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 either passed or are trying to pass a law in L.A. that states if your child comes to you and asks to do some of these things and you say no, they could take your kid from yeah, you. Yeah, that's true just passed in California. That does, that makes no sense. They want us to have no control over our children. I don't, I don't get it. In schools. I don't get it. Hospitals, libraries. Yeah. They just want to manipulate. You got to understand when they're so young and they're already, that's impressionable. That's right. Mm -hmm. And from them, they're going to believe what you say. I mean, yeah. we say Santa Claus is real. You know, the Easter they Bunny. Believe it, like, right, yeah. exactly. Like, you gotta they know what they're doing. Remember who you're dealing with. Like, I, I don't, I, I can't take credit for it, but I heard somebody say one time, he's like, all right, if your son comes to you and says, Daddy, I want to be a girl, ask your son, son, what is a girl? Mm, that's a good one. What is he going to do? He's going to say, uh, well, he might, he might want to play with dolls. All right, you want to play with dolls. Fine, play with dolls, right. but you're a boy. Right. Playing with dolls. That's, that's right. Good. We're pink. That's All right, cool. We're pink, but you're a boy. That's right. Wearing pink. I was a town boy. I still love boy sneakers and mm. I love my baseball cap. Doesn't mean I want to be a man. Right. It's, I it's, just like style preference is one thing. Right. Gender selection is but a I whole But I like playing sports thing. too. All right, so there's that uh footage that that went super viral, right? Of course, you know what happens next. A lot of what he said was taken and ran with on social media by members of the lgbtq plus community um and and trans folks that uh did not like what he had to say and there was this backlash yesterday when this was it yesterday or today when this came out i think it was yesterday this happened i can't quite my days are a blur anyway when this happened when it came out you know a lot of people were rallying rallying behind neo saying yo we agree it's it's sensible right it's it's sensible and it has nothing to do what he said has nothing to do with uh, any of members of the community, he's just simply saying that from a logical standpoint, it doesn't make sense that we are to believe that our our child that's five, six, seven, young, even in the teenage years, young teenage years, that they fully know what's best for themselves and that we would just cave in and allow them to make this kind of a life-altering decision is absurd, especially when we look and, and we have these other establish laws in how we look at when someone can drink alcohol, when someone can join the military, when and what age, rather specifically these ages, when you can vote and at what age, um, and, and as a stuff that I already mentioned. So, so again, talking about it in context to like that, it makes sense. I, I agree. I rock with him on this whole take. I agree. It's a different time. Um, I parent very differently than somehow people might parent their kids and that's fine. So, then this happens he tweets out i'd like to express my deepest apologies so this image and the caption here says after much after much reflection i'd like to express my deepest apologies to anyone that i may have hurt with my comments on parenting and gender identity i've always been an advocate for love and inclusivity in the lgbt uh, lgbtq plus ia community and i understand how my comments could have been interpreted as insensitive and offensive gender identity and is nuanced and i can honestly admit that i plan to do better uh plan to better educate myself on the topic so i can approach future conversations with more empathy at the end of the day i lead with love and support everyone's freedom of expression and uh, pursuit of happiness so then this comes out today and then it erupts even bigger than what it was because all of the people that initially rallied with him is like, yeah, we, yeah, we agree. Like this is, it's facts. Like it makes sense. Then they got triggered. It's like, bro, you folded like a wet noodle, right? That's all the common uh, takes were from people that the day before were like, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. You know, like, yeah, we, that was a, that was a based ass take. He's getting blasted, dragged through the mud uh, by all of these people. I mean, you can even see Tristan Tate right here. One, one of the first replies on here, unfollow. I mean, it was a lot of celebrities and other people and just general public that were commentating on how Neo just caved. You caved to them. And I thought that was the end of it. I really thought that was the end of this whole story until Neo released a video, this video message. Let's take a listen to this because this is a crazy story right here what's going on loved ones this is neo all right listen 
I normally don't give too much of a damn about what y'all think about what I do, or what y'all have to say about what I say, whatever. I normally don't care because, like I said, opinions ain't special. Everybody got one. However, this is something I feel very strongly on, and I need y'all to hear this from the horse's mouth, not the publicist's computer. So, so first off, he blasts the PR agent who did that, wrote it on his account, because clearly there's a lot at stake for Neo taking this position. What you guys don't know, and, and I've hung with Neo, interviewed Neo. He's good peeps, real good peeps, man. He's always been a solid one in the industry, real good guy. One thing about Neo is because while he may not be forward facing, you know, actively as an artist, he's still working behind the scenes, as I mentioned earlier. He has connections to Beyonce and Rihanna and all of these huge superstar artists that this could jeopardize his finances because if there's still an association with him and because people don't like his take on, you know, uh, if they felt offended that if people are trying to make the claim that this was some kind of transphobia thing, which I wholeheartedly do not believe that's the case whatsoever. The association would mean that these artists would have to cut ties with them because then they don't want to look bad, right? You know, um, Beyonce, Rihanna, so on and so forth. They're very, very protective of their brand and their personality. And, and I mean, look what happened with Beyonce. When, when, with the whole controversy with Lizzo recently, Beyonce on her world tour has been like taking Lizzo's name out of the Queen's remix song um, and stuff and distancing and all of that stuff. So when any of this controversy happens, these other artists will step aside and, and, and step away from this artist. So for Neo, this could obviously harm his livelihood, which is why it seems either the label or his PR agent posted that. I don't even know if they did that with his knowledge. That'd be kind of crazy. But it very much gave the impression that he folded under the pressure. And then he comes back and says, this ain't coming from the PR. This is coming from me. So check this out. First and foremost, I do not apologize for having an opinion on this matter. I am a 43-year-old heterosexual man raising five boys and two girls, okay? That's my reality. Now, if my opinion offended somebody, yeah, sure, I apologize for you being offended because that wasn't my intention. My intention is never to offend That's anybody. That's fair. That's However, fair. However, I'm entitled to feel how I feel. Facts. Facts. I'm absolutely entitled to feel how I feel the same way you are entitled to feel how you feel. I ain't asked nobody to follow me. I ain't asked nobody to agree with me. I was asked a question and I answered the damn question, okay? I have no beef with the LBGTQIA plus community whatsoever. I ain't got no beef with y'all. Do whatever the hell it is you want to do. Do what you want to do with your kids. However, somebody asked my opinion on this matter and this is how I feel. I will never be okay with allowing a child to make a decision that detrimental to their life. I will never be okay with that. I don't care. I, I definitely plan to educate myself a little bit more on this matter. However, I doubt that there's any book anywhere or any opinion that somebody's going to tell me that's going to make me okay with letting a child make a decision like that. That's just period, point blank, and that's how I feel. If I get canceled for this, then you know what? Maybe this is a world where they don't need a Neo no more, all right? And I got no problem with that. I'm a hustler, all right? I'll figure it out. I got kids to raise, and I'm going to do that regardless. So with that being said, Y'all have a good day. I love everybody. Live how you want to live. Love how you want to love. But your opinion is yours. Speak your opinion as much as you damn well feel like it. Because as I said, they're not important. They're not special. Everybody got one, and you're entitled to it. I'm entitled to mine. All right. Y'all feel how y'all want to feel. Have a great day. It's Neo. Peace. Yo, based Neo 100%. I'm so glad that he came back to clarify that and say like, yo, no, 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 I ain't gonna stand for that. I'm not gonna fold. I I'm holding my position on this. And again, he made it clear that he his intention wasn't to offend anybody, but that he is entitled to his opinion. He's entitled to um, express his beliefs and how, it, how and what it means to parent his children. And I think that he made a very logical, sensible uh, uh, point about how are we to believe a young child knows what's best for them. That's part of our responsibility as a parent to guide them until they are of a legal adult age for them to then spread their wings and get the hell out of the house, go to college, you know, start their own lives and all that stuff. We're supposed to guide them. They don't know what they don't know. And to believe that a young child knows what, what's best for them, right? If you're a parent, you know this. If it was up to a kid, they'd eat cotton candy and, and, and junk sugars all day. So just because they want to do that, what, you're going to allow them to do it? You wouldn't do that. So why is it any different when it comes to the topic of 
um, you know, gender identity and that at a young age. And that's just a really um, crazy that it's become such a, a big deal right now. But uh, it's even more scarier that if you have a mindset similar to Neil's that it is portrayed as being transphobic, that it automatically means you are trying to impede what they're doing. I, very much like what he said, do what you would like to do. I'm, I'm not going to live like that. I wouldn't parent like that. And that's fine. You could do what you want to do to your children. I feel for, for the child. That's just how I feel about it. But this was something that has really got a lot of conversations going, which I think need to be had about being logical and reasonable when it comes to this very topic. Um, kids fundamentally don't know what the hell is in their best interest at such a young age. And to let them decide what they want to do and, and alter their life in that way is absolutely, in my opinion, absurd.